Hello, hello, guys. Happy Sunday. Get my camera straight. <laughs> hello, hello. Hi, Anne. Hi, Linda and Linda. Um, so happy that you guys are here. And Sue and Kathy and Ari and Melina. So many. Hi, guys. Hello, hello. Hi, Nancy and Mary Ann. Hi, Amy. I have <laughs> always, I think I always start all my videos and then I have a hair tickle in my arm. So hello, hello. Hi, Letitia and Sue Braun and Sharita and Judy. All right, guys. So glad that you're here. It is a 301. We're just going to chit chat for a minute. Oh, is it on my hand? Um, chit chat for a little bit and then we're going to get started because I have lots to share with our project today, but then also um, giveaways from the last live I did, the hydrangea, and then giveaways for this Sunday. So, hi Chris, hi Barb, let me know where you guys are viewing from. I'd love to see how many people all over the world um, and where you're at. Lots of Canada. So on on the stats, you can go on the back end of um, like my Sandy McTeer Designs Facebook page, and it kind of fluctuates between the viewers, the amount of viewers between California and New York, like the states that I have the most viewers in for that live. Um, but I have to say, Canada, you're inching up there. <laughs> um, it doesn't say where in Canada, it just says Canada. So, hi Shirley, hi Brenda. Hey sister, good to see you on. I miss you, I'm ready to come back and hang out by the pool. <laughs> so, hi Cheryl and Shirley. So Linda um, Alavarez, the storm's headed this way. I just um, text with my mom in Alabama and they have hurricane strength winds in their area right now and it's supposed to move this way. So let's just hope that it doesn't happen within the next couple hours and we don't have any interruptions or glitches or anything else. So let's hope. Hi, Brenda. California, New York. There's California, New York showing up. Hi, Myra in Kentucky. Hi, Janie. Oh, thank you, Lucy. I really need to get it cut, uh, but I'm loving the length and um <laughs> but i do need to get it colored because i have you know quite a bit of gray that's popping in my husband keeps saying go gray go gray i'm like no i'm too young right now to go gray <laughs> so hi henriette in the netherlands and ann from florida good to see you guys on thanks for putting where you're from they bypassed us this time the storm sharita i'm so glad yeah yeah, they're supposed to get ugly here today, um, but later today. So, for most of Georgia. We're right smack dab in the middle of the state. Um, hi, Charlene. And Kay from Virginia. So, what did she say? Can't wait for the tea cups. Me either. So, on YouTube, Carol Manhart, you were the first person that commented that I saw. So, message me and let me know what e-packet you want. And then Peg... Brenda Y on Facebook. Again, message me and let me know what e-packet you'd like and I'll get that sent off to you today or whenever you message me. So, fires all over, I know, Linda, right? Scary, scary, scary. There's my New York people showing up. <laughs> all right, I'm not sure why that hid. Um, so, we are streaming on both my Sandy McTeer Designs Facebook page and my um, YouTube channel. So I'm going to see. No, I won't do that. I'm I don't want to touch anything. I'm afraid I'll mess it up. In Connecticut, close enough to New York so I can jump in with them. Yes, you can, Janet. <laughs> and my youngest is in Connecticut, so you get extra points. <laughs> oh, thank you, Carol. It is a fun, fun project. I wish I had grabbed my... Um, my journal page because I did this with my membership group last month, um, but I changed up some colors. So I'll show you the original from 2014. Do you ever look at your old projects and go, um, it used to bug me 
But now I'm just like, wow, I've grown since then. <laughs> you know, and that's what it's all about, right? Is learning and growing. So um, this was the one that I taught locally. I taught for almost 13 years locally at my local Hobby Lobby. Um, and so in 2014, I did this one. Now, what would I change? A lot. The background's very plain. It needs more shading, needs some more highlights. <laughs> um, but I did that in 2014, and then I adapted the lesson to an art journal page, shared that with my group last month. Um, and as my um, commitment to them, if it is a lesson I teach in my membership group, then they automatically get the e-packet for free. So all of my members, your e-packet is under freebies guides five, I think, in the membership group. So make sure to check that out. Thank you, Lucy. Um, what color is your lipstick? I have this. Thank you, Lynn. So yesterday I went shopping. I hate to shop. And for those, <laughs> my family, uh, my husband, that know me when I was younger, I was a clothes horse, loved to shop. I hate to shop. So um, I went yesterday to this Tanger outlet thing to look for something to wear to my niece's wedding this weekend. And I got like three compliments on my lip color and I came home, my husband goes, what lip color is that? It's a little dark. <laughs> and I said, it's what I always wear, but what I did was I applied it again and it makes it darker. But it's Kylie um, lip and the color is Dolce, D-O-L-C-E. And it's a matte um, lipstick. So, anyways. I thought I had the surface, looked last night, and it had snowflakes on the scallops. Oh, Linda. Um, or tossing them out. Don't toss them out, Sue. I have some things coming up real soon um, that I'm gonna share with you guys on kind of reworking and revamping a painting to add texture to it. Um, so, not sure if that's gonna be in June or July, but hi, Shirley. Hi, Carrie. Um, Hi, Susan Malone. You switched over, Barb. <laughs> hello, hello. Hope you had a good visit. It looks very natural on you. Thank you. I like something that's not... I've, I've tried to wear red. Uh, my mother looks beautiful in red. My sister-in-law looks beautiful in red. Me? I look like I just walked off the corner. Does not look good. <laughs> so... Anywho, 308. We're going to give a couple more minutes. We're going to get started and I'll announce the giveaway winners from last time and then our giveaways for this week. And we've got a special bonus giveaway for this week because my page hit over 5,000 follows. Um, so thank you very much for you guys doing that and being here. Um, and so I have a bonus giveaway for this live, cannot wait to share that with you. It's something I don't give away often because it's a little pricey, um, but I wanted to throw it in. Got the pattern, thanks. Oh, thank you, Judy. Um, so yes, the e-packet for this is on my website. Um, I have to look through the bottom of my glasses. <laughs> oh my goodness, so let me just go there. So the e-packet is available on my website. And let me just show you because I did have someone ask me um, you know, what's in your e-packet? I need to move that out of the way. Um, and let's get started. I'm just going to go ahead and scroll right down. Wow, congratulations, 5,000. I know I was so excited. Um, like, you know, there weren't fireworks and everything on my page like I was hoping <laughs> Facebook to say, you have, um, you know, this many. Hi, Paula McCoy. Are you driving? I hope you're safe. How do you get membership? So, Nancy, I'm going to see if I have that on here. If you go to my website, um, I'll just pop this up. If you go to my website, and which is Sandy McTeer Designs at, um, dot com, and I do have a membership group, and we paint three to four times live um, each month. And let me come back up here. Um, we paint three to four times live each month and all the lessons are recorded. So if you can't join the live, you can go in, um, you know, into the guides and find it. 
Um, I do freebie lessons. Like I said, this e-packet, since it was a piece that I painted with my group, I might have a picture. I don't have the original page. It's on the other side of my studio because I didn't think about grabbing it. Um, but this was the journal page that we did. And so it has, um, let's get that off. It has a little bit different colors, background, was just very kind of watercolory, which I love to do in my art journal. Um, but since it was based on that, they got the e-packet for free. All right. So, and then if you have any questions at all, you can always message me about my membership group or you can uh, find more information, like I said, on my website and then hit that membership, um, paid membership tab and it will give you all the information. Okay. So, thank you, Al. Ellie, thank you, Ellie. I missed the I in your name. So, oh, thank you, Lucy, for reminding Sharon. Glad you're here, Sharon. Hi, Ronald. I'm assuming maybe you're Gloria. <laughs> um, anyway, Cindy Jansen, thank you for the stars. So, on Facebook, there are stars. Um, and you can buy stars, and that money goes to the World's Kitchen. So, um, at the end of this quarter, I'm going to take all that money and send it off as a donation to the World's Kitchen. Um, you can't do that on YouTube, but on YouTube, there is, there's something in the comments. Like, you can click on that little dollar sign or whatever. I don't know. I've not done that on YouTube, but I've seen it done. So, um, you're so welcome, Nancy. And again, if you have any questions, just let me know. Um, gorgeous colors. Thank you, Linda. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Let me come right back up here. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down um, to my tabletop just so I can show you when you get an e-packet from me. Let me find the... So it basically comes with, you know, a color photo of my piece a large color photo of my piece, complete supply list, um, and then step-by-step -step instructions and pictures to give you um, a better close-up view and idea of how I paint it. And then um, a line drawing, which is not in here because I used it today. <laughs> um, but that is what is in my e-packet. So let's move those. And let's get started. So, let's see, sorry I missed your live on Friday. No problem, Judy, no problem at all. So, like I said, in my membership group, we're doing Mixed Media May. So we've done Mixed Media Backgrounds. Um, and then we did, um, the well, we did the teacups in April, but then we're doing the Flower of the Month for every month. And this month, the flower of the month is Lily of the Valley. I wish I had my page because um, it's gorgeous. Um, I did share it on my Instagram story. Not sure if it's still there, but super pretty. And I love Lily of the Valley. Um, so, all right, 313. Let's get started. I'm going to scroll right down here and we're going to take care of giveaways first. All right. So, the last live I did, my uh, sixth in the series for my um, spring flowers. I'm gonna zoom in just a little, and then I'm gonna turn on this light to the right of me. Give me just a sec. Because I'm feeling like it's a little dark on that side. So, um, and so we had some giveaways from that. Let's go ahead and take care of those. So I had some, the Crafters Workshop um, has great stencils. And hello, this is cool too. So if you don't want to use the pattern, you can use and paint, um, you know, similarly. Just remember a stencil or a stamp is like a line drawing. All right. So the winner of those is Letitia. So I have your information, Letitia, and I will get these out to you, okay? So let me move those to the side. And then we had um, brushes, let's see. Um, so the angle brush set, half inch, three eighths and a quarter inch. And then um, if you're not, if I 
if you're new and you didn't see it or you didn't see the last live, Dynasty also makes makeup brushes for um, some of the biggest and independent owned makeup companies. Um, and so it's Beauty Strokes. And so this is a bag with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight brushes in it. Um, and the winner of those is Debbie Bennett. So Debbie, if you will message me your um, mailing address, don't put it in the comments, make sure you message me. Um, I will get that mailed off to you, okay? And then what else did we have? We had stamps, so Stampendous, love this one with uh, butterflies and flowers. Um, and then the Sunflower Spray, which is um, new. That one, I wanna say that one came out earlier this year. Um, and then love these little llama stickers. So the winner of those is Nancy Maroney Richard. So I will get those out. Nancy, I have your information, I believe. So I will, um, I will get those out to you. Lily of the Valley is my birthday flower, 88 on Friday the 13th. Well, Nancy, happy belated birthday. Um, my son, my youngest, was born on a Friday the 13th. Okay, and then the last one from last week was for um, General Pencil donated. They gave me these um, at the recent show I was at um, as a giveaway. So the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver fantastic um, for cleaning your brushes. Kiss Off, if you get this on your clothes, it removes oil, paint, grease, makeup, blood, lipstick, coffee, red wine, grass stains, uh, da, 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 and more. Um, fantastic stain remover. And then um, a large soap. And what I do with this is I get an um, from the Dollar Tree a cheap uh, soap container that has a lid and I just run my brush back and forth to clean it on that soap. So the winner of that is Debbie Visor. So Debbie Visor, message me your information and I will get that off to you this week. I know that Lucy, I saw Robin's birthdays in two days. So all right, so giveaways for today and then like I said, we have a bonus giveaway. So first giveaway is I got my shipment of um, Stampers Anonymous stamps in. Let me zoom in. Now, like I mentioned on the last live, these can be a little pricey, but at the same time, it's a tool. It is, it is a tool that you do not have to replace unless you ruin it. Um, this one, unfortunately, the bag when it came broke, like it was torn. Well, I can't sell that. Um, but it's still perfectly good and I already have two sets open for myself. So I'm gonna do that as a giveaway. And then two little Stampenda stamps. This one is Fresh Bloom. Now this one is discontinued. Um, and Debbie Antonick helped me get <laughs> this out of retirement so that I could have some made. So um, anyway, so love this fun little stamp. And then Sunflower wishes and honeybee kisses so that's one giveaway all right now this is all you have to do to enter the giveaway share this post if you're on youtube you can hit the share button copy the link and share that on your facebook page and um that would be greatly appreciated and that's what's going to get you entered um especially on Facebook, they have changed the algorithm again. So um, posts being seen and lives being seen and things like that, a um, little bit slower than usual. So if you'll hit that share button, share with your friends. If you share to a group, make sure that you are allowed to share to that group, all right? So the next giveaway is I love, this is one of my favorite stencils. Um, so Tracy Moreau has these, and then these are some of her stencils that, let me see if I can put it on here, um, that used to be on DecoArt. I don't believe they're on DecoArt any longer, um, but isn't that a beautiful stencil? So that one, and then this one, again, so pretty. 
So those three stencils is another giveaway. Okay. And then I'm going to try and find a place to put all this because I don't want to ruin it. Let's put that back there. All right. Then we have a third giveaway for a set of uh, Dynasty Pro stencil brushes. So an inch, three quarters, and a three eighths. Love, love, love that three eighths. Um, I'm gonna use it today actually. So stencil pro set. And then finally, the bonus giveaway. Like I mentioned, it's a little bit on the pricey side. So um, I normally do not give these away. But because I hit five over 5,000 on my page, I'm going to do a bonus giveaway, and that's for the um, Heat It Craft Tool. All right, now this is U.S. spec. So if your name pops up on the wheel and you live in Europe and your electricity is the opposite, like 220, right? Um, unfortunately, it's not going to work unless you use a converter. So... Anywho, so the fourth giveaway is the Heat It Craft Tool. Again, all you have to do is like, comment, share, but I'm going to switch it up and say, com or, uh, excuse me, shares. So if you share, you will go in. I hope you'll comment <laughs> and like this post. Um, but sharing, I'm going to take all the shares, put them on the wheel, and then those names will go in um, for the drawing, all right? Now, the drawing will be held on my next live, which is going to be June 12th, um, because I have a wedding to go to. All right, so let's see here. Um, thanks, guys, thanks, thanks, thanks. So yes, share, and let's zoom out just a little. So this is the surface I used, um, and I'm going to use for my stack teacup series. So this first one, is the um, spring, obviously, the spring tea. And my next one is gonna be the summer tea, and that is June 12th. And um, so this is the surface, and you can find that at right there, cdwood.com, it's the scallop dome plaque, and that's the item number. Um, so you can get that on their website as well. So it is just this, MDF, love the little scallop at the bottom. So many things you can do with that. Plan to on two of the designs, but not all four. Um, so again, our spring design. So let's get started and I will show you what I did because I did a little bit of prep just to save us some time. And it's so dark in this upper corner here. All right, um, that is the best gift ever. All righty. Thank you, guys. Thanks for sharing. What color is your dress for the wedding? So, Karen Wilson, I went shopping for a dress. Did not find one. Um, if you guys have a favorite place, either on, well, online's a little bit tight now, but, um, you know, a store in the U.S. that you like to go to to shop. I just found the fabrics and the designs just kind of, ugh. So, I, um, I might just dig through my closet and see if I have something. All right, so what I did is I base coated this piece with Oyster Beige, all right? So I, um, I always, not always, the majority of the time, um, I will put some multi-purpose sealer on it and then just to kind of keep that MDF from raising or wood grain from raising. And then once that's dry, I painted it with Oyster Beige, all right? When that was dry, I started stenciling. So I'm gonna show you how to do the background. I already have one prepped, so we can save a little time. But what I used was this beautiful um, brocade. Let's see if that's the front. I think that's the front. Yes, because the writing. Not that you can read it, but... Um, so, they have a live sale on May 31st. Oh, awesome. Thanks for putting that there, Lucy. Their live sales are awesome. So, this is um, the Elegance Brocade. Let's see, do I have that on here? I don't think so. Um, but anyway, it's also available at cdwood.com. And then I used, of course, the my favorite stencil of all time, the Tim Holtz Flourish stencil. Um, and I do have that on my website. 
And then um, I wanted a butterfly to go in the background, so I used this set that I just got in. Um, it's the Flutter, Tim Holtz Flutter set. So I'm gonna use this one right here. And let's move that out of the way. Oh, I got Happy Mail and I forgot to show it. Maybe at the end I will. Actually, I got three things of Happy Mail and I can't share two. <laughs> um, but I'm going to take some warm white all right, so some warm white, and let's put that on our palette. Thank you, Elena. I appreciate that. No dress, I know. I um, I have to find something this week. I am going to go to a couple of local boutiques to see if I can find anything. Um, but I, I despise <laughs> trying clothes on. I usually buy them, bring them home, and if they don't fit, I take them back, which is such a hassle, right? Okay, so I'm gonna get a paper towel handy. I have my warm white and I'm gonna use, um, this is a half inch, you can use a 5 8 stencil brush, but I'm gonna load it up with that warm white and then I'm going to come over here and wipe almost all of it off. Now, what I didn't wanna do was have, you know, do the whole stencil, just do pieces and parts here and there. So soft circular motion, doesn't matter if you get all the design. Some of the lines can be missing. Okay. Like that. See, it's a little faint there and not there. Totally good. Totally good with that. All right. And then I'm going to move that brocade up and do something on this stencil. It makes me smile, and I have to show it to you. So, do you see the little smiley face right there? She actually looks like a Vegas showgirl, right? With her headdress feathers. <laughs> um, anyway, I kept seeing that as I was stenciling my design on. All right, and then a little bit more of that quatrefoil design there. And so you just want to kind of move the stencil around. Maybe I'll move that brocade down there. And we want that to go to the bottom. So each time you load your stencil brush up, you want to make sure that you um, wipe the majority of it off. Okay, I want that there. So I'm just going to turn, see how I just flip that stencil right over? You can just flip it right over and have those going um, a little bit closer to the edge. Okay, so again, just a little bit of that design. Then I'm going to put some words, and because you're using such little paint, it, it's not going to have much paint at all built up for me to be able to, you know, flip it back and forth. So um, let's come up here and do that. Again, this is warm white. And does not matter if things are lighter or darker. We're going to take care of that and kind of soften and neutralize everything with a wash of color. So, a little bit there. Let's get some more. Hmm, let's do. So, see, even just turning the design, the stencil, a different direction is going to give you a different look, even though it's the same pattern. All right, let's come down here and get some of that on the scallops don't try and you know line it up exactly as mine just put it here and there but not everywhere okay and even in here even though the design's going to go there if there are places where you can see through um the design i like the handle or um even between those flowers i want something everywhere so, some of those words. A little bit more of that. And then our last little area. Let's get some of that on there. Okay. So, I do see one little area. All right. So, that is dry, but I am going to real quick just... Give it a little hit with that heat tool gun. Okay. 
There we go. Okay, move my water out of the way. So to kind of soften that look and neutralize it, um, I'm going to use a wash of Oyster Beige. But because I have a little butterfly on here, I wanted to um, use a butterfly stamp just to put a little bit of, again, some interest in the background, but nothing that screams, you know. So you see the butterfly there. Um, I have one down here. I have three. The other one's so faint, I can't even see it. Oh, the wing right there. So um, I'm going to use a foam brush. You can use a foam brush, a makeup wedge to load that brush up with warm white. And then we're just gonna tap it on lightly. You can use a brayer as well to go right over the stamp. And then I'm gonna lay that in place. And let's get a little bit more warm white out. Will a regular hair dryer work? It will, Linda. The reason I don't, uh, with a blow dryer, unless you have it on a low setting, a lot of times it pushes things. Um, it'll, it will eventually dry, but I do love how instant, you know, this is. Now, I could get really close and have it move wet paint if I wanted to, um, but I prefer this over a hair dryer. But by all means, if you have a hair dryer, and I love how quiet it is. Okay, so going to load that little sponge brush up. Um, and so if you are new, this is your first time watching. Welcome, welcome. I can't seem to ever be on time. <laughs> no worries, Cindy. I'm glad you're here. Um, do you have a wood grain stencil? Tim Holtz does not ship to Canada. Lynn, let me look and see if I have the stencil. I used to carry the stencil. Um, and then it was hard for me to get. I do have the Stampendous wood grain stamp, um, but I'll have to look and see if I have that stencil and I will let you know. Okay, so let's put maybe a little one over here and it doesn't have to go on the whole thing. See, it can go right off the edge. Hi, Carol. So what I was gonna say as well is um, it is a little difficult for me to look up a lot when we're painting um, or when I'm painting and showing you how I painted this design. So if I miss any questions that I don't see, I promise I will go back and answer those. And um, we'll go from there. All right, let's put one maybe going this way. Hmm, let's go there. Okay, now when you use paint with your stamps, you wanna make sure that you wash them very nicely. So if you put this in the water right now and give it a little bit of a scrub, it will, it will come clean. Um, if you leave it on to dry, little hand sanitizer will work. Okay, let's dry this. Oh, Linda, I'm so happy that you're here. I loved your messages on the um, on my page just about how excited you were. So I get excited doing these. I love connecting with you guys and certainly has helped these last few years, right? Okay, so that's nice and dry. So what I wanna do, especially those butterflies are a little bit brighter than everything else, right? So I'm going to get, um, hmm, well, do I have a big brush? I have to grab a one inch brush. I could use that foam brush, but eh, so. Let's get, let's get a big brush, like a one inch flat, two inch flat will work as well, but I wanna get it wet. And then taking that oyster beige, I wanna make a little inky consistency paint that's going to be a wash to go over everything. So what that's gonna do is it's going to tone down. You'll still see that design, which is gonna give you great interest in your background instead of it just being one color. It's not too in your face. 
that tone on tone, this wash of the same background color that I used, Oyster Beige, is going to um, just give it a nice little soft look. If you get too much, just take a paper towel and wipe it off. Okay, so I'm digging that. So that basically, when that dries, will be your background. And then I'm gonna put this to the side because I already prepped um, just to save on time. Y'all don't need to sit here and watch me paint in a solid color. Um, so what I did, again, line my pattern up. Ooh, oh, the wind just arrived. My whole house just shook. Okay, so um, did the line drawing, transferred that, and then let me share with you how and what I base coated with. So, um, I just went over once on the letters because I like to shade those. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Um, the flowers, I used a little bit of lavender and warm white, just to make it lighter than this color, all right? And then for the leaves, I used fresh foliage and warm white. Now that did a couple things for me. It lightened the color of my base coat, but it also made it more opaque. So if any of those colors are transparent, um, the warm white is going to make it more opaque. Okay, so the leaves I did with foliage green and the yellow flowers I did with bright yellow and warm white and I just brush mixed them pick up, pick up, mix it together and go. I like brush mixing because I love the variation in color you get instead of, you know, measuring out or, you know, two drops of this, two drops of that, mixing it with a palette knife and you have the same color for the whole flower. Um, brush mixing gives you a variation. So bright yellow and warm white for the little yellow pansies that you can only see parts of for the pink cups and saucer, I did baby pink with warm white. Um, again, I would say equal parts. I just picked up both, mixed it on my brush, painted the cups, the saucers that were pink, and then the green cups. And you can switch out the colors, make them whatever you want. Um, I used sage mint and warm white. Again, just to lighten the color um because and i did two coats so all right so let's get started we'll do the lettering last um my butterfly when i transferred it i just took if i want to see something um and not have to lay the pattern back over it i will take a fine tip sharpie marker that does not bleed so this ultra fine tip sharpie marker or you can use the uh, Molotow black liner. These are permanent. Uh, this is a 0.3, and that's what I used on the um, on my butterfly. Okay, because putting that white paint over it, I still see my design, right? So that's just going to help you. Okay, all the colors I'm using today are um, Decorate Americana, with the exception I'm using my Doxine Purple. I'm using the Media Line because it's gorgeous. It is so much more vibrant and beautiful and transparent and I love it. So um, I'm using that and then I'm also going to use Payne's Gray. So if you've been here a minute <laughs> and watched my lives, you know that I like Payne's Gray, right? Um, oh, thank you, Peg. You learned so much. I live in the country and love to be able to watch your lessons. Well, I'm so glad that you're here along with everyone else. Thank you, thank you. Okay, I love that background too. Simple, right? But again, putting that wash over, it just softens and tones everything. Okay, let's take care of the cups first. So I'm gonna zoom in just a touch. And I might cut off some of the flowers there, but there we go. Um, so, I wanted to put some stencil designs on the cups, so I used, again, the Flourish stencil, and then I used pieces and parts of the brocade on here. Instead of using a third stencil, um, 
I just, you know, hello, this is gorgeous. So, and because it's very faint in the background, um, you still probably will pick up on that design. So we're gonna do this one first. And I have, um, let's see, let's see, let's see if I have it. I do not. Um, so Chris Hoy has, and so does Patty Rawlinson, has that little stencil tool that you can lay thing, you know, lay it down so that you don't get it into an area. Hmm, that just takes too long. <laughs> so if I have an area that I don't want to get into, I can use sticky notes, um, you know, and post-it notes, put that on there. Um, that's not very sticky. So I am going to do this part here. And then I'll try and cover that up when I um, when I do it. But again, I want to get up in those nooks and crannies. So I'm going to show you if you want it soft and subtle. Remember, I base coated with baby pink and warm white. If you want it to be um, soft and subtle, just use baby pink. Okay, and then I'm going to wipe that most of that off. And then we will lay this in place. Um, I do always have a mezzaluna brush handy. So I'm gonna get um, mezzaluna brush. I use these for dry brushing. I'm gonna use it today, but it's also a great eraser. <laughs> Hi, Julie from Louisiana. Hi, Lori. Um, here from South Carolina. Oh, well, thank you so much. Linda, thanks for telling your sister. My sister's name is Linda. So, all righty. The one I just went and visited, they, um, their youngest son, she has three sons like me, uh, just graduated from high school. So, okay, so I see that that purple flower, I don't wanna get a lot on there. Now, when, um, if you got the e-packet and you're gonna paint this, you don't have to put the base coat on the flowers or the leaves, you know, and then if you get something on it, you can always paint over it, but I didn't do that. So just baby pink, soft circular motion. As I start to feel like that paint is going away, I can put a little bit more pressure. I have a little bit on that handle. The handle's a little tricky, but again, it's doable. It's doable. Let me show you what I mean. So stay in there. You can also use tape, okay? So let me hold this up so that you can see. See how subtle that design is, but still pretty. But I wanted to bump it up a little. So I am gonna add some color, but I'm gonna take that mezzaluna brush and just kind of, it's a slightly damp. And I can do that because it's such little paint, it's gonna come off. And if it doesn't, I have to base coat those things again anyway. Okay, but what I wanted to do to, to darken this a little bit, so let's line that back up. Let's see. That's the hardest part, lining it back up. I think it's right there. Yep. Okay, um, is some joyful pink. So magenta, joyful pink, royal fuchsia, um, just a little bit darker. And then I'm gonna take that um, same brush, leave the baby pink in it, pick up some joyful pink, swirl that on your palette, wipe almost all of it off, soft circular motion, counterclockwise, clockwise. That just helps pick up any paint that's built up on the edge of your stencil. Okay, pretty, pretty. So I will take that and get a little bit off that green. There we go. And I'm not gonna worry about the leaves because I'm, um, I'm gonna paint those. So the handle didn't get a lot on it. I'm going to just move that, get another little design. And so just move it around and get some of that color, some of that pattern on there. Okay, let me get that off that background. Alrighty, a little tricky, but doable, like I said. So I'm gonna take that baby pink that I had in my brush, add some joyful pink, let's come down here, 
and move that stencil around so that it's not cookie cutter, looking exactly the same. Okay, now what helps too is you can see the color underneath. So I'm going to try and be careful <laughs> um, and not go on to that green cup. But if I do, we'll fix it. Okay, and just like I did the background, if you put that on and you're like, oh, that's so dark. Oh, dropped my brush. Um, if it's too dark, all you have to do is paint a wash of baby pink over it. And just like the background, it's gonna tone it down a little. Okay. And then this has just a little bit of design on that top, saucer only. The other ones are just little slivers you can't even see. Um, let's go right there. Okay, so little bit there. Again, you can do the pink cups, stencil the pink cups, put the green cups on, stencil the green cups. Um, a lot of different ways you can do it. I just did it the way that I knew it was going to save some time for us today. And again, I don't need anything on that one. But if you've got a big space, you could always come in and, you know, do a little a little design somewhere. Just kind of throw it in like it's meant to be there. Okay, all right. And then the green, so I'm gonna switch stencil brushes. Let's go to a small one. Um, and it looks very feminine with the stack cups, right, Sue? I love it, I love it. Okay, so I'm going to get out um, Plantation Pine is what I used for the stenciling on the green cup. Get a little bit of that out. Again, load it up. Wipe almost all of it off. And when you wipe it off, you wanna make sure that your paper towel is dry. If you're going into a wet area, it's gonna make your stencil brush wet and it's going to create a big mess. All right, let's do, um, we'll go ahead and do this one down here first. And I'm going to kind of line that up. Again, I can see that pink saucer underneath, so I'm gonna try and just follow that line of the green cup that I can see straight across on that rim, the brim of the cup. The rim of the cup, brims on a hat. Hello, Sandy. Um, and then the handle, see there's not much on the handle as far as that design, so I'm gonna move it over. And that's where this 3 8 um, small stencil pro is gonna come in handy. So to having that big brush, a big stencil brush is going to um, be too wide, too big for you to put it on this small in a small area. Okay, so there, again, I'll take my mezzaluna brush, a little bit of water, because it's just faintly put on there. Paper towel, paper towel. Um, I can get that off. And it's not doing anything to my background. So I'm not scrubbing real hard, I'm just right in that area where that paint is. Move it off. And if you get something real pesky, just take your background color and paint over it. Okay. And then let's go up to this one, and I'm going to turn that and use this different, differently. So I just have it sideways. Again, soft circular motion. The harder you press and push and circle over your stencil, the more paint's gonna come off your brush. So when I first load a stencil brush, I'm a little extra cautious about how hard I push. You can always apply more pressure as the paint starts to dissipate. Okay, and then on that handle, again, get a good area on that stencil design. Another thing I've found if you kind of push that together on one side, you could also use the small mezzaluna brush um, if you wanted to. Smaller stencil brush if they make one. 
Okay. And then we'll just clean that green off there. So that's our design basically on our cups. Um, love, love, love. Now, I'm going to move that out of the way. I am going to do a little bit of a wash on um, the pink. I feel like it's a little bright. Um, and maybe even on that green, we'll see. But I'm gonna take some baby pink wet brush. You can see there on the right of the screen, I have um, just an angle brush with baby pink on it. Tiny touch of warm white. I'm just gonna make it more opaque. So again, I want that to be inky, inky. And I'm just going to do a little wash. Don't worry about the flowers or the leaves. They're in the way. I tend to go over things that are in the way. I'm just gonna turn that brush up on its toe and we'll do a little wash there. Okay, and then a little more pink, a little more white, uh, warm white, more water. But look at the difference, how tone and subtle that is um, compared to how bright and in your face this is. If you like bright and in your face, by all means, leave it. Um, but since this was spring, I was going for that, you know, kind of Easter palette of pastel colors. Um, and our next one is summer tea. Oh my gosh, I cannot wait to share that with you guys. So, and you can switch to a smaller brush if you want to. I'm just being lazy. <laughs> right here on this saucer. All right, let's dry those real quick. So, Linda, um, Payne's Gray I Carry on my website. Hello, Christine Mahoney. So good to see you here. Stencils make such a difference, right? I mean, they really can take a piece to the next level. Um, love, love, love them. So I don't have Plantation Pine on my website, but let me see where um, Decorts. So is it that one? Nope, it's not that one. That's a different deco art. <laughs> Let's take that off. Um, I have a discount code for deco art. I'm trying to find it. Oh, right here. So um, I believe it's a one time, but, and I think it's 20%. So when you order on decoart.com, you can put that discount code in at checkout. Um, and that'll give you a little bit of savings. Okay. All right, so that's dry. And it's warm. So before I go with the next step, you want to make sure that cools down because when you take that brush of paint right to it, it's going to um, it's going to grab it right off your brush. Okay, let's move some of these things out of the way. Come over here. Um, so I have the joyful pink out plantation pine. I'm going to take my 3/8 angle brush. And if you're not familiar with an angle brush, it has a toe and a heel. Um, it's at an angle. It just makes floating color so much easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that wet. Um, I love these teacups. Oh, thank you, Jana. I appreciate that. Okay, so let's get a little bit of that joyful pink. So I'm gonna load the toe. I can already tell I need a different brush. <laughs> so that one had, had an errant hair and I was not going to sit there and fight with that. So I'm going to take my brushes damp. A really good way to see if you have too much moisture in your brush is to do that. And if you've got water dripping down your finger, you know you have too much water. So I'm going to take the toe of the brush, that longer end, pick up a little bit of that joyful pink, and I'm going to work that in and then kind of walk it to the right. So see how it's darker? And as you're walking it over, if you're left hand, walked left-handed, walk to the left. Um, but this is just called walking a float so that you can get a lighter color. 
it's much easier to add layers of floats than it is to try and get off a whole bunch of heavy floated color. Okay, so right on that yellow. I'm gonna go right up underneath the um, flowers and I'm actually gonna switch. I can, I'm gonna switch to a half inch angle. Sometimes if you use too small of an angle brush in the area you're floating color, um, it's gonna take a little bit longer, but you end up getting more of a line. And so, cause I'm trying to, there we go. So see how much better that's going on. And we're gonna go around that leaf, around that pansy. Come right up here. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Now, you don't want to have a straight line. If you feel like you're getting a line, um, you want to take a mop brush. Um, this is IPC Medium Soft Flat Top that I use as a mop brush. IPC is for ink, pastel, and chalk. So you can just soften where that left off so that it doesn't give you a harsh edge. All right, a little bit more water. Hopefully you can see there on the right of the screen, I'm loading that brush just on the toe. And then I'm going to float that color right along the top rim of that cup. And just walk it down just a little. Okay. And then again, I'm gonna take that Mop. I do have these on my website as well, along with the um, a lot of other brushes, Dynasty brushes, of course. A little bit more water. Now, on the um, saucer, so for this one, I will switch to a smaller angle brush. This one, I just want to do a little bit of shading where it meets the cup. underneath the cup. And then I'm also going to float it around the edge of this saucer. This saucer gets more done to it than any of the other saucers because you can see more of it. So we'll put that under the butterfly. Oops, right on my butterfly. I'm just going to Follow those scallops with the toe of that brush. Again, you can always switch sizes. Oops, a little too much. So I need more water in my brush. Come back and lift some of that out. So we have that floated on, and then um, our little sliver of pink right here, I'm gonna switch brushes to a 3 8 angle. Thank you, Chris Avola, for putting that. Karen, thank you for being here. So glad you're here um, for the first time. Again, we've got some amazing giveaways. Only thing you need to do to Enter is to share this post. Okay, so I'm floating that color right up underneath where it meets the, um, the green. And because it's so small, I can just soften it with my finger like that. So that will widen that float just a little bit. Um, and I'm good with that. Okay, let's turn this. So I don't want there to be any transfer lines. And I'm just gonna float it along the other side, which will leave it a little bit lighter inside, but don't worry if it goes all the way to the top because we're gonna highlight with a little dry brushing. Okay. 
There we go. And I am loving, I like that rich, so I'm gonna put a little bit right there. A little bit more. Again, you can layer as many times as you need to. All right, let's come back up here, finish these cups. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that joyful pink on the toe of my half inch angle, and I wanna take care of these sides and the bottom. So up that side, and you see how I'm just assembly lining it? It just makes it easier. Okay, and then we'll turn it over. We'll do this side. A little on that side. Again, don't be afraid to use those fingers. I'm gonna, gonna, I'm gonna turn it over <laughs> so I can get a little, um, better view for you guys instead of my hand being in the way. But I'm gonna take that and float it right along where it meets the green cup. So basically it's lighter in the center. We've shaded the, the edges, the top where it meets the flowers, that bottom where it meets the green. Um, this one is scalloped, so you wanna follow the scallops. See how my brush is dragging? I need a little bit more water, just a touch, a little bit more paint. When I'm painting and designing, a lot of times I'll sit there and keep going. I'm like, hello, you know what to do. Get more paint, <laughs> get more water. Okay, now these cups have, um, some of them you can see the side. And that, again, just gives a little bit more dimension to those cups, but I'm gonna do that with a liner brush because it's too thin. So I'll take, let's get, I'll just use a zero rigger. So load it with a little bit of that joyful pink and I can see right here See how that little loop right there, let me zoom in. Okay, so how that little loop, again, gives the appearance that that cup is right down into um, the cup above and below. Okay, now let's take care of these handles. I'm gonna switch to a quarter inch angle. They can be a little tricky. Um, because it's just a small little area, but I'm just gonna use a smaller angle brush. Load that up. Now what I, what I won't do on my palette is come back here, because see how wide that is? I'm gonna end up getting paint on that entire brush instead of just on the toe and slightly over. So just make yourself a new little runway. And we're going to paint like I did on the saucer. We're gonna just float that color along the top, covering up any transfer lines. It's, I wasn't even worried about the base coat covering it because I knew I was gonna shade there. And then a little bit on the side. A little bit more water. You tend to run out of more, you know, paint and water on that smaller angle brush quicker. Let's come down here. Okay. And then we're gonna do the bottom. So see, the only thing that has color on it is the toe of that brush. Like the saucer, if you get very wide, like this got wide in a couple places, it's okay, because we're gonna dry brush. But what I do wanna do is right here, 
at the bottom, I want to create um, a little bit more depth. So I'm going to take that joyful pink right there, and I'm gonna push a little bit harder to give me a darker float of color. Any graphite transfer lines, you can get rid of those. Um, actually, I'll show you away in a minute, but you can also just use the background color as your eraser, okay? So, because I can already see right there, I, um, I obviously have pink. So before I forget, I'll just float some of that on. I usually wait till the end but we're there. Okay, let's get some more. You're so welcome, Linda. It does help to know which brush, right? And how they work, because a lot of, you know, I know a lot of you might not use an angle. Um, ooh, Linda Safranco just said Hobby Lobby has their paint on sale, 99 cents. So, y'all go stock up. Um, I want to say they have plantation pine. They do not have the media line, um, but I carry the media line because it's my favorite. Um, okay, so we'll float that right along there. When I started teaching classes at Hobby Lobby, I think it was 2007, um, paint was 78 cents a bottle. But as with everything, especially pigments and stuff to create paint has really skyrocketed. So don't be surprised to see the prices are a little bit steeper than what they used to be. Okay, so a little more. I really want to take care of that right there. Just those lines extended. I don't like that, so. Don't worry if you've got a nice clean float of color, because when we dry brush on here, it's going to take care of that. Um, Just want to make sure. Let's get that. Okay. So I'm going to use that rigor and come right in here and make this even darker. Right there. And that one kind of come up. And just push that down just to get a wider little. Again, to give that handle some dimension instead of looking just flat, right? Um, okay. I am going to, again, like I said, those two lines are driving me crazy. So I'm going to take a little bit of warm white. Some baby pink. I'm going to get rid of them. And then I will paint some pink there. Okay? Quick little fix. And then let's do our green cups. We'll get all that done and then move up to our um, flowers. So plantation pine on the toe of my angle brush. Um, and I'm just using a gray... Um, gray matters, paper palette, um, disposable paper palette. I get these um, on Amazon. You can get them at Hobby Lobby, Michaels. So you want to work that into the toe of the brush only. Okay. Now you can see it's not just on the toe. It goes over slightly. So it's going to give you a nice little float and then just walk it over a little. Again, come right at the top of the rim of that cup, 
Sometimes I help it along. I'm going to leave that now because if I go into it, it's going to move. Do the top of this one. And then right around that corner, it's going to be darker. And then we'll fill that in with some dark paint. Okay, let's turn it. Then a little bit more water. All right, down that cup. Just gonna soften that. Right along that bottom of the cup. And then up that other side. Okay, now let's take care of our little green saucers down here. So I'm gonna switch back to that quarter inch angle. Little plantation pine on the toe of that brush only. And again, work that in. See how much water is on my palette there? Touch your brush to a paper towel and just come right back to it. So now you've got the right amount of water. Okay, so I'm going to take that right up underneath that scallop and see how I'm kind of patting it, very loose float, instead of going like that. Very loose. A little bit more. dragging, which means I need more paint, more moisture, so a little more water. All right. Um, let me, I need to move that out of the way. Um, right in there. And then I'm going to skip doing the bottom, and I'm going to go right to this next one. Um, Gonna turn that now. When I when I did the line drawing, um, I put T on the side, so then you line it up with the bottom of the scallops, which I did. But silly me, did not tape it in place, so it went a little high. I don't care. I just left it. All right, so got that, and then I will just soften that look best to do it while it's still wet and then we'll come in along that bottom edge just a little bit of color And then on this one, I'll go right up underneath that pink. So my brush is not on the chisel edge. It's actually on the flat part of that, but my, my brush is at an angle. So it might look like I'm on the chisel edge. I'm not. When you float color with an angle brush and you're on the chisel edge, you get a line. We want there to be a little bit of a bleed. So... Okay. Righty, let's go on to the um, pink cups. Excuse me, <laughs> the green handles. Um, and I didn't do a wash of the sage green on those. Um, what was that? Sage mint, not sage green. Um, you could, again, just to tone it down. I, I kind of liked it like that, so I left it. Okay, we'll do the top. I really hope we don't lose power because it is pouring outside. All right, 
So that's the top. I'll come back again, more on the toe of that. When I first began painting, our craft store would have two for a dollar sales. Wow, that's amazing. Hi, Linda from Michigan. Okay, so get that other side. Ooh, I really went outside the line there, didn't I? We'll fix that up. And there. All right, let me see if I have. I do. Okay, so I learned this trick from my friend L Lana Lamb years ago. <laughs> stuck my finger on my paper towel um, and that's to take she sells these on her website um, but it's just a, a mechanical eraser okay so this white one I'm gonna get it just dip it into my water basin and I'm gonna come oops let's pump that back out I'm going to take that and just lightly go over that paint See how it lifts it? I thought that was brilliant when she showed that. Again, you wanna get it wet. It's a great way too to, you know, add a highlight on something or if you made something too dark, you can come in and fix that up. Oops. And that way it doesn't mess with your design um, in the background. Because I just very lightly, and remember we did a wash with that oyster beige over the stencil design, so that's not gonna move, it's gonna stay. And if you have too big of an area or it just is not coming off with an eraser, again, background color is your best friend. It'd be like an eraser. All right, let's take that plantation pine and again, that zero rigger. Um, rigger brush is like a liner brush, but it can go flat like a flat brush. So, um, and then we're going to do that darker. Hello. Messy, messy today, Sandy. Messy, messy. Watch. Baby wipe. <laughs> Let's do that again. Again, working in thin layers allows you to wipe those things off easier than if you're using a whole bunch of paint. There we go. Okay, so just a little bit. Add some dimension there. And then we do have these little, so I have a little loop there. That one that we did, this one comes to the handle. And we'll put um, a little bit of Payne's Gray in those areas, okay. I need a little bit better shading here, so I'm going to go back to that quarter inch angle with the plantation pine. My hand out of the way. I knew I was going to do that. That's still wet. So let's do that. That is what I would call wimpy floating the first go around. And so just darkening it up. 
All right. Let's do a couple things. I'm going to take that background color because this is aggravating me. Clean that up a little. that up a little bit better and then that I'm gonna see if I can get off with my baby wipe there we go awesome awesome okay let's do some dry brushing so um, mezzaluna brush small medium large um, extra large this one's an extra large I don't want that one I'm gonna use between a small and um, a medium Okay, so it's a blend. It's got a stiff bristle, and I'm going to get some warm white, and let's take that dry paper towel, wipe that off. Okay, now on the handle, I'm going to start kind of right there. Oop, wipe too much off. If you don't have a mezzaluna brush, you can use a flat brush. Just load it up, wipe almost all the paint off. Okay. <gasps> Thank you, Carol. I did, huh? I forgot that one right there. So I will do that in just a second. Thank you, thank you. And I was working in like assembly line because that helps me not to miss those spots, but. Again, a little bit, and I love dry brushing. It just adds texture to your piece. Love it. Okay. Um, Again, anything in the background that, like that color went over, background color. We'll clean that right up for you. And again, I'm just using that rigger brush, liner brush, whatever brush you have that'll get up in that tiny little area Clean that up for you. Okay. So, so I don't forget again, I'm gonna take that half inch angle. And let's float that right there. So along there and where it meets the top of that cup. Much better. Okay. Now, I am going to come back when I start doing some um, Payne's Gray, and I am going to deepen that just a little bit in some areas. All righty. So, small mezzaluna brush loaded up with white. Warm white is what I'm using. And we have that dry brush some on the handle up there again kind of like on the other side of that dark that I put on we'll just give that handle that dimension take it from looking flat to you know weighted dimensional there all right let me see if I need to okay so I'm going to keep this brush this small mezzaluna pick up some warm white and on this saucer here what I want to do is I'm going to pull down some highlights so just dry brush on some of that white and see how I'm curving it because that that's curved it goes down so I'm just going to swipe on some white there very little here because we do have a rim on the front of this saucer 
again a little a little there I didn't wipe as much off just because it was not coming off my brush so and then we'll come back with some titanium white which will brighten it even more then a little bit on the green saucer here use your finger to soften it the pink right along the front this is warm white So let's come back with some titanium white. Again, I'm gonna keep with that small mezzaluna brush, just kind of assembly line this. The titanium white's gonna be brighter, so it will show up when we just do a soft little dry brush. there and there oops right back in that warm white I want titanium white and then we're going to come over here so on that mezzaluna brush it's flat but you can go up, come up on the chisel edge to get in a tight little area oh I need to shade there hello load it up wipe it off little bit brighter highlight okay all right down here with the white again I'm gonna pull in some dry brush little highlights here load it up wipe it off a little there And then right along the front. Now these, I do want them to stand out a little more. So I'm gonna load that brush up. This time, instead of wiping all of it off, I'm just gonna tap it. And then here, I can kind of tap that brush, a little bit heavier highlight. Like that, okay? Hi, Mary Campbell, hope you had fun with your family. Should there be a back-to-back -back float down the front center of the whole stack? Well, I'm gonna do a highlight on those with my medium mezzaluna, and I'm gonna go right into the titanium white. And let's go right here, and I'm just going to light pressure, kind of swipe it this way, and then swipe it this way. Okay, so a little bit more. Swipe it that way. Oops, too much. Swipe it that way. Okay, then we have a little highlight there. You know, almost like the lights hitting that ceramic glazed coffee or tea, coffee cup. Hello, teacup. Are you a tea drinker or a coffee drinker or both? What's your preference? I have one cup of coffee in the morning and then I usually love to have a hot cup of chamomile tea in the evening. All right. This is a great way too to you know lighten it up if you need to lighten it up before you add this little glint of white. Again, kind of going up and sideways use your finger to soften it if you need to but don't be afraid to leave some of those lines showing it's just going to help give it a little more natural look now i think this one's not bright enough so no straight lines so if you have a straight line pull it from the center out so it's uneven
All right, and then on this green one, I have a little bit more here. Too much paint. Okay. Now, that right there is still bugging me. So, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dry brush a little white there. Just I, That's what, first thing I look at when I see this is those two little lines sticking out right there. So, we're gonna take care of that. All right, then I am gonna come back with that rigor brush. I start with tea, drink coffee around 10, 11, the rest of the day I use. Yes, I used to, I used to drink a lot of coffee and I just limit myself to one in the morning and that's it. Um, otherwise I crash, you know, like two o'clock, so. Okay, and I just have titanium white and I'm just gonna do a small little stroke right there to highlight Right there to highlight soften those ends with your finger if you want to just so you don't have a start and a stop oh I almost got the hiccups start and a stop line um, and you don't want a lot of paint on your brush either okay so a little highlight there soften that even more oh my goodness Sandy all right, and then here we'll do the top. And then down here, a little bit where that highlight is, and then just swipe it with your finger. So it's just gonna make it brighter. Swipe it to the left and to the right. For that little brighter highlight there. Okay. And then before I forget, a little bit of green on that quarter inch angle. I did not get that little tiny section very well. Again, highlights, shading, all that. Reevaluate all of it at the end. Um, I do have a little bit of a highlight there. I'll lightly touch that to soften it. Okay, and then down here around my cup, I have um, I have a little bit of shading, and I have these. Um, think of them like parentheses. Okay, so. They come around and come around. So I'm going to do that with my liner brush, um, this rigor. I'm just, oops, a little too much. Don't want a lot of paint on it. So I can see that top line's there. And then just bring it and swipe your finger. That way it's not a, it's not a line that goes all the way around. It's implied that it goes all the way around. Okay, and then we'll shade that with some um, plantation pine. Excuse me, goodness gracious, Sandy. I know I've said this to you guys before, when you look at something and then you say it, but that's not what you meant to say. Um, we're gonna shade that with some Payne's Gray. It's usually about this time every year my husband and I go to the eye doctor in January and it's about this time every year after getting new glasses and then working for a while that all of a sudden my glasses don't work as well so okay that's looking so jagged there
just erase that. Okay, let's move on to, I'm gonna use a smaller, um, I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna use this two round, um, and I'm gonna load that with white. Just feel, a round brush will hold um, all that liquid. So I'm gonna start with my hand out of the way. How about that? <laughs> um, and I'll start here, just shy of the edge of that saucer edge. white little highlight on. And then again, I don't like there to be any kind of a, you know, start, so you can always just swipe that with your finger to soften that out. Okay. And then I'm gonna take that same brush, load it up with Joyful Pink. So I rinsed it out, I'm gonna load it with Joyful Pink, and I'm gonna take that right along the edge just to give it a little bit more um, thickness to that saucer. So we'll here, and I'm gonna push just a little bit. To get a little bit more weight. To that saucer. Okay. What is the name of this pattern? Lisa, this is Spring Tea. So if you go to my website, um, right there, you'll see it on the front page of my website under what's new. Spring Tea. It's the first in the series of four. Next will be summer, then we have winter, uh, we have fall first, hello, and then winter. Okay. So I'm going to put a little bit brighter highlight there. And then on the cups themselves, I have a line. Um, so I'll do this so I keep my hand out of the way. And on this one, I went right on that top of that rim. Okay, and if it's looking not so straight, just take a clean angle brush and just do that. Okay, so we've got that. And then this one you can't see, so don't worry about that. I'm gonna start here. And this one goes below the rim. So you've got that dark rim, and then a little pinstripe line. Soften that where it starts and finishes. And then that green one follows the shape um, hi, Joni. Glad you're here. What size is this surface? Karen, hmm, it is 12, I'd say 12 and a half by seven. So seven by um, 12 and a half or 13. And again, it's at cdwood.com. That's the item number. And you can, um, you can look there. And then don't forget, Karen, the pattern is under Guide 5 on the membership group. You guys got that for free, so don't buy it. Okay, so again, I'm just going to mimic the shape of that scallop. Soften where you start and end. All righty. So it's coming together, yeah? Let's zoom out just a touch. 
uh, Payne's Gray. We're going to go ahead and take care of some shading on these cups. Back to my 3 8 angle. And I'll pick up on the toe only a little bit of Payne's Gray. I'm going to work that in. And then I definitely want to walk it over so that it's not that dark. Again, it's easier to build up if I need to add another layer. So I am going to go right over that. And remember I did white there to take care of those lines. Um, gonna put some joyful pink back down. And we'll dry that. That paints gray, just a subtle little float of color. Look how much richer it is. Um, again, we'll just give you some nice shape to your cup. A little bit more. Come over this side. Oops, a little too dark. Just wipe it with your finger if you get it too dark. I'm going to take that right along that bottom edge. And since we're already upside down, let's go ahead and take care of this one. Chris Avola, thank you so much for putting that link in. Appreciate you. Okay. And then, you know, if you feel like it needs to be softened, soften it with a little mop brush. Get just a little more. Where was I? <laughs> right here. Okay, now in these little spaces, a little bit of Payne's Gray, I'm just gonna use the toe of the brush. You can always come in with the, a liner, smaller brush. I have a little sliver there. A little tiny sliver there. All right, let's see if there's any place else. Oh, have one right there. It's a little tighter, so I'm gonna switch to this round brush and just pick up some of that Payne's Gray. All righty. So, Little bit of white, I'm gonna fix up and brighten that just a little. Brighten that just a little. Okay, so back to the Payne's Gray, um, 3 8 angle brush, a little moisture in there, and we're going to do the green cups, so there.
right along the base where it meets the pink. the side, along the bottom. And up that side. Okay. So, there again, it makes that highlight show up even more. Um, switching back to that quarter inch, a little bit of Payne's Gray, just a touch. Do that right along that bottom. Right there. Where that handle meets the cup. It's gonna be a little bit darker. Lots of little details, lots of little areas to get into. around where that meets that cup. I can see that went right outside that line when I um, did the stenciling, so I'll come back later and fix that up. Again, that background color is a great eraser. meets the cup. And then just right on that inside, deepen that. All right, let's turn that around, see if I forgot anywhere. Okay. Nancy Maroney Richard, you won one of the giveaways from last week. Um, so, I have your information. I will send you your prize. Um, let me look. Let me look and look, look. Just looking to see. That Payne's Gray got on that little highlight. Um, shading down here, minimal. Um, again, that Payne's Gray, light, loose float right up underneath. And you can do that before the, um, you know, putting that white highlight on. Um, I didn't, I just went over it as if that shadow was putting a shadow on that highlighted area as well. Very loose. So the toe of that brush is right up underneath that scallop. We'll come in around that white line. Float a little bit. You could use a liner brush to get in there if you've got a hard time, you know, getting that tiny little angle brush in there. A little line is not gonna hurt it. Or the little Payne's Gray. Okay. I just don't want that to stand out too much, so I didn't add too much to it. Um, in fact, that white's even a little bright, so a little bit of baby pink on a wet brush. I'm just going to soften it just a little. And then Joyful Pink.
There we go. All right, back to the Payne's Gray. right up underneath that green saucer where it meets the pink. So what I was saying about my glasses, I have, um, I can't wear progressives if you're a glasses wearer. Um, I have tried, cannot wear them. So I have bifocals and I'm finding I have to look through the bottom of my glasses more, even though I'm not supposed to. I, Look straight at them, but they are not working. A little down here. See how that's not coming off my brush? Just need a little bit more water. Right up underneath that. Okay. So, coming back with that round brush, let's just brighten this a little bit. Kind of swipe that. There we go. Okay, let's move up to our flowers. Okay. I'm just gonna look real quick, see if, uh, maybe take your glasses back and have them, I'm gonna have to um, for just, they're just not working, don't you new. Okay, let's come to our, uh, where we have to base coat again, just a little bit. So I'm going to use a small flat brush, like a number four, and I used fresh foliage. Is that fresh foliage? Oh, I don't know why I say fresh foliage. Foliage green, foliage green, foliage green. I did that on the last time I used it. Oh, nice Joyce. What are you painting on the memory box? Thank you, Allie. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that foliage green, a little bit of warm white. Mix that, remember I said just brush mix it. And then we will paint in those leaves where I got a little crazy on the um, stenciling. Okay. And it's always gonna look lighter when it's wet, but even if it is a little lighter, that's quite all right. rather have that than cookie cutter. Okay, we're gonna zoom in just a touch. So you'll see on the pansies what I did is I left a little bit of space. Um, if you, like the yellow is transparent, has a little bit of warm white, but you can still see the line drawing. Um, I can still see the line drawing on my purple, but that just helps you a little bit know what petal is what. So we're gonna get some lavender and a little bit of warm white on that brush. So that lavender, a little bit of white, warm white. And we're just going to take that pink off there. Okay, so for the yellow flowers, I'm going to take some um, saffron yellow I know I have shared this with you guys before. Take these things out. It keeps your bottle from closing all the way and your paint will dry out faster. So, okay, so on, I know you can still see the line drawings. We're gonna take care of that. Um, bright yellow is what we base coated these with and warm white. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that. A little bit of that. 
bright yellow, warm white. And we'll take care of our little petals there that got pink on them. Okay. Where else? This one too. <laughs> Let's go there. Let's dry that real quick. We're gonna take care of the yellow ones first just because they're, they're tiny, there's nothing, um, there's not too much to them. And then, hi Robin Wilson, no problem. Thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna come in and pick up some of that saffron yellow on the toe of my angle brush. You can see that on the right of the screen right there. So I'm gonna work that in on the toe of the brush only. And then I'm going to float that color at the base of the petal. And the base of that petal. And the base of that petal. Okay, so we'll do the same thing here. kind of soften, soften, soften. Come back with the mop and soften it if you need to. Just kind of patting that float on. When things are in the way, like that little swirl, I just go over them. You can always put the pattern back on or you just follow that flow and put it on. A little bit at the base there. Okay. Now let's darken that just a little bit. And I'm going to use, surprisingly, I'm going to use a little bit of that saffron, work it in on the toe. Then I'm going to pick up a little bit of Payne's Gray. Okay, just a little bit. And then I'm going to swipe that right, swipe it. I'm going to float it right up underneath there. See how that just lifts that petal that's on top even more? That Payne's gray and yellow will make um, kind of like a green, but it's just gonna deepen that shadow for us. And then that petal we're going to put underneath, so we'll float right there. And then on the other side of that leaf there. Okay. Not too, too dark on these up here. I just very lightly floated in some of that Payne's Gray. And that saffron yellow with a little touch of Payne's Gray. I'd say it has more saffron yellow on your brush. Tiny touch of Payne's Gray. All right. So what can I substitute the gray with? Um, Americana has a Payne's Gray as well. Um, soft black, I would say, um, I would use before, um, black, like just plain black, because that's just too, too harsh. Um, you could even take some Prussian blue with a little bit of soft black, and that will give you a really pretty Payne's Gray-ish color. Okay, so Prussian blue, a little bit of soft black. If you don't have soft black, use less lamp black and then just mix it till you feel like you've gotten you know a good mix all right let's move on to the highlight on those um so i'm gonna use sunny day really really pretty we'll put that on 
sunny day. It's a happy yellow. It's a pretty, pretty yellow. So again, I'm just gonna load that on the toe of the brush. Then I'm gonna pick up a tiny touch of titanium white. Just wanna lighten it up a little bit more. And then we're going to go right along these, um, the edge. And if you've got any transfer line, you can go ahead and take care of that when you put that highlight on. Okay, and then let's just soften that a little. And then on that one, comes down on the cup. Okay. And then these get a little bit of a, like a loose little outline with a white um, liner brush with white on it. It's just going to soften that. And this one, actually I have that highlight right there. Okay, now what happened on that one is that needs to be a little bit darker and those two need a little more separation. Um, and that's where that little white outline, loose outline will go and help separate them, but a little bit of shading will as well. So little sunny day, a little bit of titanium white on the toe of that quarter inch angle brush. Okay. So let's brighten right there. And remember I said, you know, yellows are transparent. So having that warm white or a little bit of um, titanium white will help you cover up those transfer lines. When I'm completely done, I will usually go through my design and make sure I've covered them. If not, background color um, or simply adding a, you know, a little more highlight and going just past that line. All right. And sometimes instead of adding more shading, brightening your highlight gives the appearance that your shading is darker and vice versa. What was it I said that these don't take too much? <laughs> Unless you keep futzing around with them like I'm doing. Okay, let's go to the purple ones. Let me come down. So the purple, um, again, I used the fluid acrylic doxine purple. It's transparent. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's highly pigmented. Um, if you don't have that, you can use the Doxine Purple and the Americana line. I want to show you the difference. So, same thing. Get that, those little paint goobers off. Okay, so look at my palette at the colors together. So, Doxine Purple and the Americana line, Doxine Purple and the Media line. So... Let's take a flat brush and get that wet. And I'm going to show you just on this little post-it note. Okay, so that doxine purple is a little bit brighter. But, it, I mean, it's beautiful. It's a pretty color. But now I'll take the same amount, actually a little bit less, because that doxine purple is so highly pigmented.
Okay, so see the difference? You just have a really pretty richness to that um, media purple. And I'm going to take the 3 8 angle. Let me look up. From Odaha, share this to your craft. Well, thank you, Cheryl, for sharing that. That's how you enter the, the drawing is share. And again, if you share to a group, make sure you're allowed to share to that group. I don't want anyone to get their hands smacked. Okay, so I'm going to load the toe of that 3 8 angle, and then I'm just going to walk it over to the right a little bit so that it's not as intense. Flip my brush over. So it's on both sides. Okay, and then I wanna float this color at the base of these petals. Nice, loose little float. So. And then where I left a space, just a subtle little soft space between, um, I can put my shading there and it will cover it up, okay? Again, soften if you need to. Push that back in. Do, do, do. A little bit of purple there. There. I used to be a stickler about not turning my piece, you know, because a lot of painting is right there in your wrist uh, and being able to move. I just know for the camera, if I don't, y'all aren't going to be able to see anything. So that's why I move it a lot. And, you know, just move it so it's comfortable for you to lay that on. If it feels awkward, try turning your piece. So biggest thing when you're floating with colors, you just don't want to leave any kind of a straight line or halo from that color. So soften it. And then we'll come to this one. <laughs> I knew I was going to do that. So purple pansies are my favorite. I'm going to... Um, and then I love maroon. Maroon pansies. It's kind of deep burgundy. Um, and I like, there's so many variations of purple ones. The ones I like the best are they're a little darker in the uh, base of the petal. And then on this petal that hangs down in the center, I like that that edge is a little bit darker. bit of that doxine purple. Get right along the base of that petal. Soften it. Oops, that's a line. We don't want a line. So I'm gonna come in and soften that. The other thing, um, when you turn it, sometimes you lose track of what is what pedal. So I need to make sure I push this down. Um, so, you know, if you're losing track of what's a side pedal, what's that center pedal, just flip it back over. I've done that and you highlight the wrong side or shade the wrong side. And then along that, oops, made a little moisture. Right along the base, that petal. And then 
soften that. All righty, let me see, let me see. When we put our little white highlight lines on there, I'm gonna come back in and I'll show you a really cool way to make that petal look like it's cupped um, instead of just flat. So this one, that's the front petal and I have very little of that one showing. Well, I'm sure there's more to come, but that storm that just blew through is already gone, so. I couldn't believe the pictures out of Colorado the other day with, you know, high temperatures one day and down in the 30s with lots of snow the next. Crazy weather, right? Oh, and happy Victoria Day to my Canadian friends. All right, so. This is a side pedal, the back pedal. Okay, so let's see here. That one needs to be a little bit darker. Okay, so see how rich that one is? How wimpy? <laughs> that right there is a wimpy float. So, I'm just gonna darken it a little. It's always best to let it dry and then come back, you know, if you need to add another layer. It won't lift, and you can see how, how it looks when it's dry compared to um, when it's wet. It's always darker when it's wet. It looks darker. Um, or depending on what color you're using, lighter, and um, what is that petal right there? And a second layer will help that. So I'm gonna separate that a little bit more. Okay, now you'll probably see these little spots in the center. Those are dead spaces. They're space where there's no color. So I'm gonna take a little bit of, um, it's sunny day, oh wonderful. Yes, it's a long weekend. What do you guys call this weekend in Canada? I know it's Victoria's birthday, um, but it's called, I heard Tracy Moreau say something about what it's called. A long, okay, I'm, just, I'm trying to zoom in, but not zoom in too much. All right, um, so in these dead spaces, I'm gonna take that um, round brush, liner brush, rigger, whatever you wanna use. A little bit of plantation pine, a little bit of Payne's Gray. And right in these spaces, oops, I've got a hair or something on the end of that. We're going to put this color. Sorry if you can see the top of my head. I've got to get in so I can see it. Give it a little bit of a wave on the edge of that petal if you didn't get much of a wave to that petal. And again in here, I have this space. I really do not like those little hairs on the end of a liner brush or a round brush. I know they're there for a reason. Mm but I'm gonna bite that one off. Yes, I just stuck that rinsed out brush in my mouth. <laughs> and bit off the end. Sometimes they have a little bit of a, a mind of their own and create little tiny hairs that you 
strokes that you don't see. But a right there, got one there. That one looks bigger than on my original. Um, little tiny sliver here. And a little bit there. Now what that one right there does, um, again, looks like you could stick your finger right over that um, cup. Let's put a little. Okay. And that one looks awkward here, so we're going to come up, take a little more space away. There we go. Victoria Day long weekend. <laughs> oh yes. So I'm gonna go back to my 3 8 angle. How is it 517 already? My, my, my. Um, let's take some Plantation pine. Thank you, Vicki. Um, okay, so plantation pine on the toe of my 3 8 angle, and then I'm going to add a tiny touch of Payne's Gray. So... I really need to tear that off. These palettes are nice too. It comes with a, you know, a little color wheel, but that just gets in the way. So I typically will tear it off. Okay. So plantation pine, work that in on the toe of the brush, pick up a tiny touch of Payne's Gray, work that in the same space. And we're going to float this at the base. And I want to do this part before we um, put the light on our petals. And so just soft little float of color at the base of the leaf. leaves. Plantation pine. So every, go, every time I go back to my palette, I'm going to go to that runway first to pick up paint. And if there's not enough, then I will pick up some more on the toe of my brush, work it in. Okay, soften that if you need to. This is one reason I did all the base coating. I knew if I had to sit here and do base coating, y'all, we'd probably be here for four hours. <laughs> Which I don't mind spending the day with you. But that does make for a long, long time. Okay, a little bit under there. And that float got a little wide. I'm not going to worry about it. My highlight will help take care of that. Let's pick up a little more. Oh, that's adorable. I'm doing great, Jeannie. Thank you so much. Hope you are as well. Busy, busy. It was a crazy busy week, and I have another very busy week coming up with... Um, some deadlines and lesson with my membership group tomorrow night and then um oh that does go all the way out well let's just make that go out um and my niece is getting married this weekend which is exciting so it's the first wedding for the mcteer cousins 
which is fun. And my, my son is coming back from Connecticut, which it'll be nice to see him. We pick him up at the airport on Friday. Okay. So a little bit more there. Now this leaf is underneath everything. So, you know, where it meets right there, you can do a little bit of a a little bit of shading there and just kind of soften that with your finger. Oops. Brush is bone dry. You guys have to tell me too if you can hear, um, I have a fan on because it's very, very hot in my studio. Hopefully you can't hear it. Okay, where's my mop? So I'm going to come back with that same color and I'm gonna do a couple things. So I'm going to go right along the, float that color, just along the base of that leaf, the bottom part of that leaf there, soften it with your brush. Ah, that's why. My runway got very big, so I rinsed my brush out, and I'm going to switch, and let me show you what I mean. So, if you have too much moisture in your brush sometimes, see how that green kind of migrated? So, I had green on the heel of that brush, which was causing that float to not... Um, stay down where it was supposed to. So we'll come up this side of the leaf. Right to the tip. Um, the bottom of that leaf. And those little leaves, they are way too small for me to um, try and get this 3 8 angle brush in there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that center vein down the uh, center of these leaves. So we'll just float that on there. You can do that right up to that tip. And so this is the same color, that plantation pine, Payne's Gray. Oops. Okay. So these leaves that have a little bit of a, like this one has a curl, um, it's much easier to do those with a liner brush Okay, let me see if I missed. I did right here. Now, that's in the way. Um, I'm going to skip there because it just has a little, and then I'll put the stem there. All right, let's go to our highlight. So I'm going to use um, some matcha green, such a pretty yellowy green color. Uh, matcha green with a little bit of warm white. Not a lot, just a little. Just like I did the other, I'm going to load that on my toe of my angle brush. We're going to highlight. That side. We'll add a little bit of highlight here. Not much on that one. There. Again, 
matcha green, warm white. I have more matcha green than warm white, okay? So. Put that there. And after you do it once, you know, again, reevaluate if you need to make it brighter, lighter. Um, if you need to tone it down at all, easy fix with some, like a wash of plantation pine. Um, I'm not sure what's going on on the other side of that leaf there, but we'll fix it with background color. Okay, so I wanna highlight, and I'm just gonna go over that warm white it's kind of in the way, and I need to um, I need to cover that line. There we go. Okay. I just cannot get that one bright enough. All right, let's take that same color. I think the 3 8 will be fine. And I am gonna add a little bit of a highlight on the other side of that dark vein. Oops, went right on the dark vein. A little highlight on the opposite side. That dark vein down the center. Alrighty, let's see. Okay, let's switch to the quarter inch angle. Victoria Day's tomorrow, yes, the 23rd, but I think it's all weekend long, right? You can't hear the fan. Thank you so much. Alrighty. Um, plantation pine on the toe of my quarter inch angle and a tiny touch of Payne's Gray. You know what also makes a really pretty float of color on green? Um, is purple to mix doxine purple with green i used to do that a lot when i painted in oils all right so we're going to just float that color along the base of those baby leaves and then just bring it up that darker side and soften And I know I'm gonna have um, transfer lines probably showing. I'm not gonna worry about them. I just, again, wanna tell you guys, they're not on my original because I took care of them. Um, but your background color will be your eraser. It's a little bit of plantation pine and Payne's gray. Hello, Sandy. Okay, the base of this one. Okay, let's see. One more. All the little tendrils and little um, stems and everything. Liner brush, much easier. Okay. 
Now, let's come down, Sandy. Um, let's add a little bit of that in the center for our center vein. On these, so we'll do just a tiny little sliver. Let me think. Then. Oops, I don't think that added any color. Let's pick up a little bit more paint. Darken some of these. All right, T, all right, T, all right, T. I can already see that I um, need to brighten up. So I'm going to come back with some white and some matcha green. And let's just brighten some of these highlights. much better. Just a little one there. And then on those little leaves as well, just a touch right along that top. Soften it with your finger or a mop brush. Having to stop and pick up that mop brush, typically we'll just use my fingers. Add a highlight there. All right, little leaf. brush and let's take care of that one. It's looking very yellow. And I don't like the shape of that one. I don't I know that word that letter is gonna help cover it, but I'm just gonna widen it a little. Let's take our, I'm gonna use, this is um, a two, let me find my zero rigger. Um, a 10 aught rigger would work as well. Um, hello, I haven't moved from my desk, can I find my rigger? Nope. Okay, we're gonna use a two. <laughs> Rinse it out. Plantation pine. So, I want water in my brush, plantation pine, and I'm just going to swirl that, load that brush. Do yourself a favor, make sure there's no water on the ferrule, because when that drips, it makes a huge mess. And we're just going to pull these little stems. All right, I have to find smaller. Okay, I'm going to use this one. This is a 10 aught. Has fewer bristles, a lot thinner. It's going to give me a nice thin little stem instead of a thick one like that 
too much better. And just slide it right in. And these are so tiny, I didn't add a highlight. You certainly could. Um, these little things right here were just little comma strokes. Push, pull, lift. Push, pull, lift. Push, pull, and lift. Wow, those are big. Those are really big. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> We're going to take them off. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Okay, let's do those again. So, touch, pull, lift. I usually don't um, do a line drawing for those because I feel like I have to stay within the line. Whereas, a, you know, these type scroll strokes, comma stroke, just work much better when you improvise. Just go with the flow. There we go. Okay. And then our little curl. So I'm going to do that part first. Come back. And pull that part in. So it's much easier to break that stroke down than to try and do it all at one time. Get that on. Come around. And pull in. Let's get that little stem there. Okay. So cute, huh? Cute, cute, cute. And it'll look really pretty when we get those little cast shadows on right over that petal. Okay. And then over here. Thank you, Chris, for putting that link. So I do have the zero rigger, the number two rigger, and the 10 aught rigger on my website. I have all of them in stock. Again, just over that line, break that into a couple strokes, pull the stem, and then I do have that little tiny comma stroke, touch, pull. Okay, come in with the um, that rigger and just do a loose little uh, line, just very loose along the bottom, dark edge of that leaf. Put a tiny little Finish on the top of that leaf. Okay. I just love that little touch, that little curl at the end. Especially on these little ones, just makes them even more dainty. Right. That has one of those little hairs too. Need to cut it off. Okay. I'm going to lift some of that color right there. couple more. Oh my goodness, how is it almost six o'clock? 
Time flies when you're having fun, right? I honestly did not think it would take this long for this piece since I had so much of it already base coated. All right, then I'm gonna take that um, matcha green, a little bit of warm white. And again, on this side, you can just do a little, a little bit of a wiggle. Again, soften where you start. You don't want to see those little start lines. Like that right there really needs to come together. Light and loose. Okay, I can't take that little hair anymore, so I'm gonna rinse that out. Bite it off. Remember that water on the feral thing I told you? <laughs> yeah. That's what'll happen. You get a big drop of water come right off the end of your brush. Alrighty. Let's move on. Back to these pansies, which does not take much longer on these. It's a few little details. I'm gonna go back to that Mezzaluna brush. And I left the paint in this one, so let me just show you the Mezzaluna brushes, especially if you wanna switch between colors, little hand sanitizer. The hand sanitizer is gonna evaporate and you're good to go. Okay. All righty. Oh, thank you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna take that with a little bit of white paint on it, titanium white. I'm gonna get that up before I, um, and then on a dry paper towel, just swipe it. You don't have to wipe all of it off, just kind of swipe it. And then I'm gonna dry brush some highlights from the edge of that petal, wipe off a little bit more. And I just realized I forgot something. Hello. Actually, I think this is gonna be fine. I'm dry brushing that white on. I was going to say you can come in on the um, tips of those petals with that quarter inch, some lavender, some titanium white. Remember what base coated it, it was lavender and warm white. So lavender and titanium white is going to show up even more. Just along the tops of those petals. So lavender, titanium white, moisture in your brush. If you didn't get much of a wiggle on your edge, you can create a little wave with your brush there. All right. 
my tea. So again, guys, don't forget to enter those um, giveaway drawings I have. To share on your social media, on your pages, on your groups if you have it. All right. So this is what I'm talking about. See how straight that is? I have a straight line. So I just picked up some more. Oops, need a little bit more lavender. And I'm going to create a different edge to that petal. There, a little bit of a dip. Okay, so we're not going to do this petal, the bottom ones, just those two in the back, two in the front or sides, and then the one that hangs down does not get that. Okay, now let's go back to our dry brush, white, swipe it off. And I just wanted to add a little bit of texture without having to do a lot of little lines with a liner brush and this works perfectly to give you just a little texture on those petals. Also adds a little bit more highlight. It's easier to build that color up than to wipe off a whole bunch of white paint. So load it up, wipe it off, Go back over it if you need to. Okay. All righty. Now, up here, we're going to take that angle brush, quarter inch angle. I'm going to load some warm white, which I'm out of. Some warm white. And right at the base here, I'm going to almost like a little zigzag motion. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a little zigzag motion right from the center of that bottom petal. That zigzag is going to help you from getting a straight line. Okay. And then I'm going to soften that just a little. Okay, and we have here. And then also here. Again, warm white. I'm just going right up into that little area where they say the pansy has a smile. A little bit of a... A liner brush would take way too long. An angle brush, again, you're gonna get that, those lines, that unevenness by zigzagging it back and forth. And if you need to make it brighter, do a second pass like that. Okay. So let's come back to our little liner brush. I'm going to pick up some lavender, a little touch of warm white, but more lavender than warm white. And I'm going to do a little dot. I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, doxine purple on the brush. We're just going to put that little tiny dot right up in there. Okay. And then let's dry that. Now, when, once you do that part, you'll be able to tell if you need to come down a little bit further with your white. And I can see that I do. Um, like here. 
So I'm just going to come on the other side of that center we put on. Oops, Sandy, too much. Alrighty. Now let's take some saffron yellow. So saffron yellow on the toe only, and we're going to, I'm touching on the chisel edge and slightly pulling. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny touch of warm white on that brush with that saffron yellow. And we'll leave that one, I'm gonna come back to it. There we go. That, that um, warm white with that saffron yellow is just gonna punch it up in color just a little bit. Come back. There we go. Okay, and then liner brush. Right at the top, I just wanna pull down some little white lines. So what we did with that angle brush at first, just kind of brightened and lightened that area for us. And that one needs more yellow. I'm just gonna, I'll just gonna keep that brush. Okay, so warm white, little saffron. It does not want to go on this right side. Very uneven. You don't want anything too straight. Like that right there. I'm gonna pick up a little purple and come into it. There we go. Okay. Same uh, liner brush and white. Little tiny touch of lavender, because I don't want it just stark white. But I do have more white than lavender. Okay, so you get this little inky consistency here. And I'm loosely going to go around, oh, make sure you don't have any water on the ferrule. I'm loosely going to go around this, um, the top of that petal. The top of that petal. And I like to just soften it with my finger so you can't see where I started and stopped. Oop, that's the back. Loosely, you can give it a little more wiggle. And then this one kind of goes up and then it wiggles down, goes up. Right over that little center. center right in there. All right. Oh, thank you, Cindy. Linda Safranco, um, 
it's going to be similar. I have not decided. I have the summer already drawn out, um, but I don't, I don't know. I really liked that all the backgrounds on the last series were the same. Um, I will say this, they will be similar. I don't know if they're gonna be exactly the same. Okay, so loose little outlines. Now I did not do, um, oh, I didn't do on my finished piece, the, the back petals. Um, I just thought it would, it's just a little too much. So let me get my little dot back in there. Wide. Okay, so remember I was telling you the um, little bit of shading, so doxine purple, very little on your brush, right up underneath that kind of flip that we put on or that edge to that petal, you can do a little shading right up underneath it, that's really going to lift it even more. Oops, go that way. A little bit underneath that. All righty. Let me see. And then right along the edge of those bottom, these, a little bit of doxine purple, just to darken it up a little bit. Where you start and stop, just kind of soften that line. This, I do want that to stick out a little bit more, so I am going to do very, very, very light and loose, even looser. There we go, so it sticks out. Okay, you could do the you know the back two petals if you wanted to. I just I just didn't. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of that matcha green, a little bit of white. And I didn't, did I? I didn't highlight these on my finish, but these got a little thick. Remember, I used a little bit too big of that rigor to start with. So I'm just going to hit it every now and then with a little highlight. Matcha green, a little bit of white. Okay. Let's come down here to our um, touch that up just a little um, to our butterfly because he does not have much to him. Angle brush, doxine purple. So he's base coated with white, and I'm going to take that. Doxine purple. Don't worry about all those little loops and stuff. And I'm just going to float that right at the base of his wings. And that's pretty much what he gets. of those wings and then his body is just plantation pine you can always use black if you want to I like giving him a green body I don't know why okay let's dry that And then you can come back with that um, liner brush, a little bit of matcha green, little tiny touch of white. 
and just give it a little highlight on the body. Soften it with your finger. Um, and then outlining it. You can use a liner brush and paint, but oh my goodness, it'll take forever. And um, I'm gonna use this Molotow liner um, pen and watch how easy. I don't think I used this one on my original. I think I used, in fact, I'm almost positive. I used this ultra fine. Yeah, that's what I used. Cause it's, it's a little thinner than even that Molotow marker. Um, I used to use the fine tip of the Identa pen, but they really have not been working great for me lately. So I was thrilled when I found out this one could be used and not bleed when you paint over it or when you varnish over it. That's key. Okay, and then you just wanna... Now in that set, if you've got the Flutter Butterfly set, you know, we put the butterfly in the background, you can, um, you can just use one of those butterflies if you want to and stamp it on. I'm just gonna go over those lines. Okay. And then the edges, um, Payne's Gray. Again, you can use black if you want to, but Payne's Gray is just, um, it's less harsh. And I like, the way it looks, so. I mean, you can put it on dark enough that it looks almost black. Okay. And over here, I need a bigger brush. He's not cutting it. Hmm. Get that little section filled in. It's much easier to fill it in with your paint than it is your pen. Your pen will run out um, if you cover that big of a space in. So just save your, your ink and come in there with your pen. I think I missed a loop there. I did, and I'm gonna be daring and there we go. You do wanna make sure your paint is dry before you do that. I mean, yeah, or you'll ruin your pen. Okay. Thank you, Janet, I appreciate that. All right, so I'm gonna take a stylus, small little stylus, um, smaller the better, or you can use the um, the end of your paintbrush, you know, re really thin liner. I like this stylus, it has very tiny tips. Um, white paint. And just dot your little dots. And then do I have any on the bottom? I do. I have some right down here. Okay. So, done with that butterfly. Let's come up to our word. Um, not sure that I'm going to do both because I still have some shading to do, um, but I do wanna show you how I did these letters. All right, 
and we'll come up here to the um, to spring just because I have more to show you know more area to show you so I'm looking for my I'm gonna use um, a number two round again you can use that rigor number two or a zero warm white my brush has water in it. I'm gonna work that in. Okay, make sure there's none on the ferrule. So I already did one coat of warm white, um, but this one, sandy, 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 sandy. Is what happens when I, <laughs> I found them very hard to paint. I, oh, thank you, Lynn. Um, Thanks, Lucy. Okay, look, angle brush, Payne's Gray, on the toe of that angle brush only. I wanna do a little shading. So, on that inside left, We're going to take care of a little shading first. See if I put that warm white on, I'm gonna go over areas that need to be warm white, so. Like there. So just get a little bit of shading on. It's gonna help them stick out from our background. You can be a little wimpy with your floating here, because again, we don't want it too dark. It's much easier to do this now than after you have painted your final layer on your letters. You can always switch to a smaller angle brush if you need to. And we got it. Okay, so we've got there, there. those all right I think I've gotten everything okay now let's go back to our warm white I'm gonna load up that round brush and I'm gonna paint in those letters again hopefully Facebook won't kick us off I think there's a time limit on lives I don't know. Okay, so we're gonna go right over those again. And just to brighten up that Warm white. Making sure cover up those transfer lines if you can see them, which I knew I would with just one coat. We need to bring this back over like that. All right.
Okay, let me dry that real quick. Oops, still wet. All right, back to that angle brush, quarter inch angle. So this can be a little tricky, but it's fun. Water in your brush, a little bit of doxine purple on the toe of that brush. And you're going to float that right along the base of those letters and then slightly up. So it helps if you have, um, because it's such a tight area, if you have a clean brush that will help you get anything that maybe goes where you don't want it, okay? Where did I? The other thing you can do is you can always take like glazing medium or matte medium and brush over your entire piece. That way, if you wanna remove something, it's a little bit easier to remove when you have that barrier between the layers. Um, but I kinda of just did the bottoms of those letters. And then if you wanna darken it, just do it one pass through, very light, and then come back if you want to make it darker and do uh, just repeat it. And that will give you a much darker float of color. Okay, and then just clean up anywhere you need to. Okay, let's turn that around. Okay, so yeah, looking a little janky. Let me show you on my finished one. See how much darker that is? So I did twice over the, um, the purple. Kind of soften that. Maybe ragged is a better word than janky. <laughs> okay, we can't forget our, we'll do just a little bit on the bottom of our dot there. And then a little paints gray, just a touch. On the right side of that dot. Okay, anywhere you have your letter that um, overlaps, Little bit of Payne's Gray. You could even use some Doxine Purple. And you just wanna float that. Where those letters overlap. Does that one go, it goes underneath. one goes underneath. Okay, so anywhere those meet, you need to put one in the front or one in the back, so. I'm out of Payne's Gray, let me get a little bit more. there. Again, soften with your finger if you need to. That's a little bit there. And so I do a little above, 
little below. Okay. And then inevitably when I do that, nine times out of 10, if you go, <laughs> I go over it a little, just come in and take your warm white back on it. All right. So I will do the same thing with T, but I'm not gonna do that right now um, because I wanna show you some cast shadows. So let me zoom out just a little. Okay, I'm gonna go to that number four flat brush. Let's see, I want a four. I think, yeah. So let's use a four, wet brush, pick up some Payne's Gray, make it nice and inky. Okay, and that's dark, so I'm gonna move it over here with a little bit more water. Always best to test it on a piece of paper, make sure it's not too dark. Um, but what I wanna do is I wanna put a little cast shadow underneath some of these things. So I'm just gonna mimic the shape of the leaf. Of that vine. Hopefully you can see that. That leaf. Okay. Here where it meets the cup. Okay, so see how that lifts that right up off that cup. And my whole brush is loaded, but it's very thin, very inky. Um, and if it's too dark, just touch it with my finger to soften it. Make the shape of that. You can always come back, you know, and shade more on those letters if you want to. Um, underneath, let's do some of those stems. Again, I just love, love, love lifting that. Just a little bit of paint, right? Very little effort just goes into those. Okay, now, same thing on the handles. I'm going to come here, kind of lay that in. I'm gonna soften it with my hand. Make it a little bit more. And this one, I went under, oops, need color. And then you can come here. Same thing down here for that handle. I have very faint right there. And then our butterfly. So this is gonna lift that butterfly right off that surface. So start low and you're gonna mimic the shape of that wing. Like that, okay? And I always think, oh, that's so dark, but when it dries, it actually is perfect. Let me touch it slightly, okay. Underneath our um, saucers, I just have a little there, there, very lightly. I'm going to put some underneath this, just to lift that one a little bit more on that green one, and then the tabletop. So, a little bit of that planta <laughs> plantation pine, a little bit of that Payne's Gray, 
and I just did a little kind of to get a line swipe it with your finger again remember I said my T was a little close to my saucer swipe it with your finger so it's not harsh and it just kind of fades to nothing okay to give you the appearance of you know it's sitting on a tabletop now this one it got a little wide so I put a little bit of a highlight on top a little bit of warm white and you can always come in and add a little highlight on the top of that again just swipe it with your finger okay now the edge if you want to give it a little bit of a vignette look um, you can take some of the asphaltum I wanted something darker than the background. Um, I started with Payne's Gray, it was too dark, so I wiped it off. Um, but basically what you wanna do is you wanna load your index finger with your color, and then find a clean spot on your um, palette, and you're just gonna go back and forth on the tip of your finger. Find there, okay. And then this is key your wrist on the inside of your piece and you're just going to float that color on so the wetness from the baby wipe you don't want to use a baby wipe that has lotion um, i get the fragrance free lotion free huggies are my favorite they were when all three of my boys were younger and they're still my favorite now and i probably buy more now okay so see how you can just run that right along that edge it's easier to darken it with another layer than to try and get it too dark at first and then just go back and forth. If you get too wide, you can come back in with some of the base uh, color, that oyster beige, and go over it. So it might wipe is kind of falling apart there turn it inside out and if you have like if you're at the bottom of your um, baby wipes and they're very wet make sure you just wring it out you don't want it too wet um, in fact i'm feeling this one is a little on the dry side And when they are, a lot of times I'll just add a touch of water to it. Okay, so let's get that. And then, like I said, too dark, you can come back with a clean wipe and go over it, or you can take the um, background color and go over it. But I'm just gonna soften it with a clean baby wipe. It just makes it much easier to float that color on, right? Alrighty, so I zoomed out way too far. So the letters, again, I would go over with one more pass of that purple just to clean it up. Anywhere in the background you have color that you know you need to take away, that background color is gonna do it for you. Um, I'll finish T, um, but let me come to my original and um, I just added a sweet little ribbon to it and varnished it with some soft touch varnish. Okay, surprisingly, I didn't add any splatter, um, which is kind of rare. <laughs> I usually add splatter. Okay, guys. Wow, that was long. So sorry. <laughs> but thanks for being here. Um, all right, let's come to here. So, again, our giveaways... All you have to do is share this post. Um, if you're on YouTube, you can click that share button underneath the screen, click on copy link, and you can share that on your um, Facebook page as well, because again, that'll get people to the YouTube channel. If you've not liked my YouTube channel, I hope you will like and subscribe and hit that bell so that you get notifications of when I go live. Um, but I'm liking that. You guys, what do you think? Springy? 
springy and fun and dainty. I love pansies. So um, thank you so much, guys. Thank you, thank you. All right, have a good evening. I'm gonna go veg with my husband and eat dinner and watch something, so. Um, all right, guys, have a good night. I will be back on the 12th with the summer tea pattern. I need to get it finished painting. Um, like I said, I have it drawn out. Need to paint it and then also write the packets. So it'll be a hot minute before that's done. So, all right, guys, have a good one. Talk to y'all later. Bye.